Grégoire, tell me why is this collection so exceptional? Exceptional for plenty of reasons. I think the main one is probably that this is the very first time that we see a collection, 40 years of collecting coming in a untouch uh, to the market um, in the great collections that auction houses have been able to were lucky to sell you know over the last you know since I've been in the art market you've seen portion of it like I'm thinking of Mellon or Rockefeller of all these great great or John Marion collection that we just saw recently in the last May um, auction you see great works but you see also always portion of it because the family is keeping some or have been giving some to museums or have been sold before. This is 40 years of collecting at the best level coming straight at auction. Yeah, but what is the best level? The best level is to be able to bring together probably the best of American art. Mark Rothko, Cy Twombly, Jackson Pollock, Agnes Martin, and Bryce Marden, and then Sigmar Polke, Gerhard Richter, Jeff Koons, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, what, what's common between uh, between Giacometti and Jeff Koons, for example? I think they are the ones that have been defining the 20th century. I think post probably, you know, post 1944, what, what, what we call post war and contemporary art, you have between Giacometti, Picasso, Polke, and, you know, and Pollock, like the names, and it's not only names, and that's the what's so extraordinary with the, with the macro collection is that it's not names, it's It's the very first time, for example, that the nose by Giacometti is going to hit the block in New York. Never been at auction before. Out of the it's a cast of eight, I mean, seven numbered plus one AP, you've got already six in museums and only two left in private hands. And it's the very first time that a cast is up. The, the Sigma Polker used to be the Charles Sachi one. The Jackson Pollock used to be with Sam Newhouse, etc., etc. The Twombly is probably the best group of Twomblies that you will ever see coming at auction from the Roma 1961 to the famous large untitled 2007 that he bought um, at the Fondation Yvon Lambert in 2007 or the sculpture. Like, it's... I thought he bought it at Dagosian. I'm sorry? The, the late Tombly, I thought he bought, he bought it at Gagosian. Yes, they, they bought a lot from Larry. The, the nose also, the Giacometti nose was bought from Larry. So yes, they have been there, the great rapport and, and Andrew Fabricant also was one of the great provider of the macro collection, but Larry and, and yeah, and Andrew were probably the two, you know. Yes, uh, the, the Twombly was definitely coming from Larry, for sure. Okay. And um, so what about the estimate? How do you work with the estimate? The estimate, I think we try as always to, to stick to, to what the market has been telling us. You use data from previous sales and then you use you know what you know what you have been selling privately and you try to find or strike the right balance between expectations what you think the price of tomorrow is going to be and then so you try to be careful with the estimate or we're always careful we try to to at least come up with what we feel is the right strategy as you know selling auction or collection of that level require a strategy uh, it was as you can imagine a competitive process so it's not like it was given to us so yeah it's it's We decided the estimates and that we feel are correct and, you know, able to bring the best result. And, uh, and do you think that the market is ready to swallow such a big quantity of uh, valuable contemporary work? So first, it's not such big quantity. We've seen already in the past, in 2013, 14, 15 sessions, which were much bigger. First point. Second point, we address the quantity by doing two sessions, uh, one session in November uh, coming up and then a second session in May 22. So we divided the collection in two groups uh, in order to avoid blockage, for example. We don't want to bring four Agnes Martin penning in the same session or four William de Kooning penning in the same session, etc., etc. So no, I'm absolutely not afraid on top what we did when we got um, the collection was to obviously balance our various owner by making sure that we would not consign works we would be in competition with the collection. So I um, cannot be more pleased with what I'm going to offer in November. But is it a good period for the top art market? You will say yes, of course. <laughs> I think someone saying no, I think is coming from another planet. But uh, no, the market in 2020 was crazy. 2021 is going to be the best year for Sotheby's. I guarantee that. 
So yeah, the market is just... So what do you worry about now? You know what? I do not worry. <laughs> and uh, I'm you. just excited. No, it's true. I mean, it's... No, it's true. There's a very big guarantee. There's a very, very big figure for sure. But it's... Uh, that you don't want to tell, right? No, because it's nobody's business. It's the business between the seller and us. And, and yeah, this is not a figure that we... You know. But okay. no, I'm not worried at all. I'm just, you know, pumped and excited and... You do this job for these moments, like it's to be able to handle this type of quality. I'm not so sure I will have, you know, the same again. So you just want to enjoy every day with it. It's just, it's extraordinary. I mean, the discussions, the the exchange you have, because we got, you know, amazing conversations with the very best collector all over the world since we announced this collection. So it's fascinating to see how quality always bring the, you know, the very best of the market. So no, I'm really not worried. Merci, monsieur. My pleasure.